Do y'all ever just go in the freezer to cool off if you're in the sun? It's freaking hot. I'm trying to cool off in the freezer. The walking. Now I gotta do a leak test on this one. So I'm gonna shut it off right now and check over here. Not installed by us. I like I see that they left the, everything exposed. There's no insulation down here. What I have found are row belts because of this. Alright, so I shut it off when it was on. That way I have pressure on both sides. And I'm gonna try my tried and true leak detectors here. I didn't see anything downstairs, so let's turn this back on and uh, check up here. Now this unit, I've worked on it before. I did not install it. I never, I never came back to fix anything that the uh, other company did, but I have worked on this several times and have had several leaks. So when I was in the attic, I do a video on another one that, that was doing the same thing. Uh, rub out in the attic and then I had because they don't insulate the lines so that's their issue and uh, you guys saw downstairs they don't even insulate the uh, the line in the evaporator so it is what it is uh, it's more work for me so yeah the attic leak which I, like I said I showed one recently and the other one was the this part right here uh, I had to put a new one in I did not I need to tie strap this or something because it has a screw but I'm not gonna do it I don't want to take off the other one so that has leaked before so my bad I need to support that so that leaked uh, I believe from the top or something or or it was cracked or something so I replaced this and then we had a leak on a pipe that cracked over there and I repaired that. Right now, it looks a little oily by the dryer. So let me check that. I've had a lot of luck with this one. I kind of want to try the field piece, but this one has always worked. And we either have a service valve leak Or the dryer. It might be the pipe again in a different spot because I repaired it above the uh, service valve last time. Okay, okay. Alright, so let's narrow it down now. Are you here? Are you up here? on there for a second if anything I'll, I'll double check maybe it's going off because of something else but we'll see right now sneaky little shit all right so if i spray it obviously I didn't, if you spray it right on you can see it but if i had just sprayed it like i was just spraying the whole tube it's such a strong leak that it just shoots it off and even there like there was a white spot and it shot it off so it wasn't bubbling but I can, I was like trying to feel around for the repair that I did last time and I felt air. I thought it was going crazy and uh, it's right there. So if I go like this, you can see it now. And that is so weird, man, because that's the same thing that happened over here. I don't think there's a joint here. It's just a, like a U and it's not cracked. It's not a joint or anything. They're just like these little holes that are coming out. So I'll have to 
Oh, that's simple. It's after here, so I can pump it down and then solder it on there. That's not a big deal. Yeah, my coworker couldn't find it, so I came in today to help. Or after my compressor, I, I, I was gonna help since I was here, and he put a leak die in it. So, not a fan of that stuff, but my light wasn't working, so I didn't even get to use it. But pinhole like that won't show up because it's just like a straight shot of air right there. So, found it. If you look hard enough, you'll find them. And, uh, like I said, trusty, I like the Hillmore. And then my bubbles, I always find the leak. All right guys, so we're gonna pump down here at the king valve. And uh, normally, you would wanna change out the dryer any chance that you, you can get, but I'm helping my coworker out. We've kinda already, we kinda, we have an NTE not to exceed uh, that I can't go over. So I'm just gonna do the patch for them on that little pinhole here. So we're gonna braise and then wrap it around so that we get a good seal. And I'm not gonna bother with the dryer today. Uh, I'm trying to keep the cost down. So like I said, we're pumped down there and then I'll purge through here the best I can. And we'll just get them up and going and then we'll let their, oh, we'll, we'll vacuum and then we'll let the refrigerant back in. All right guys, so this is a trial week for me with the turbo torch. Been liking it so far. So I have this canister that's held on by magnets and I'm just throwing everything that I would need in here. So let's use that rod. So all I gotta do is uh, sand it up and braise it. And we'll try this out. do try not to burn my gauges but uh, sealed it a good piece over like up and down and all around and that should be fine it's the same thing I did on this side and that lasted so turbo torch has been awesome I do need a smaller tip because this is like some sort of mushroom tip I'm not sure I already ordered some stuff for that so I'll be using that more often because that was super awesome didn't have to bring up the uh, other torches, the oxyacetylene, and this is great for like dryers, even compressor changeouts, where you need a lot of heat, but you don't want to bring up the whole thing, especially when I'm by myself. So that's that's great. So let me go get my vacuum pump and start that, and I'll start taking stuff down, and we're good, man. Finally, get out of here. Double check on the freezer over there. It's just one of those weeks. Yeah, man, this is a cool setup. So thanks to Cam Air Tech for helping me put the magnets on the canister. For now, that's where I put everything. But I did order a holder and a mount that'll hold a pack out. 
and that's all thanks to him uh, i'll link his instagram and he has a youtube also now where he shows all that uh, he does a lot of mods and stuff and i've always wanted a turbo torch i've just never knew how to carry it and now that i saw it like uh, his idea and stuff i'm gonna you know build this out and now i'm gonna use it finally i've had this turbo torch uh gauge and everything and handle for the longest time i just never figured out how i wanted to use it so like i said thanks to him now i know i just have to get a new tip and i ordered the holder for this a tank holder and and the mount for the pack out because i use a pack out to hold my extra copper uh tube cutters and all that stuff so now i'll be able to like mount it on here this is held on by magnets if i need to put like rods and stuff i'll probably put them in here it's not that tall though so he has another mod where he puts magnets to hold like a solder weld canister like the the thin ones a little um the little packaging that the rods come in so he puts it there i don't know if i'm gonna do that but that's my setup for now all right so i got to take some stuff down already that i didn't need and we're pumped down and this thing has a trader core so i don't have to worry about keeping a hose there or anything i don't trust the caps like if it didn't have a core valve to keep it like from coming out so we're pumped down in the receiver i'm gonna use my manifold to vacuum the rest of it down because we're from the dryer going down uh, we need to vacuum because that's empty so i'm gonna use my cordless and i'm gonna use my manifold as my micro gauge every now and then it's, it's useful for that so that's how i'm gonna do this one normally especially on a new compressor or something bigger i'll use my uh true blue hose and a 3 8 hose and not a manifold but it has its uses so i like that as an option this freaking thing is so annoying but i re i've already checked it's just a, a cable line that they have and they ran it above this unit here for some reason but i'm gonna go downstairs take a break uh, i should be able to check this wirelessly so we will do that that way i don't be in the sun and that should be it just gotta bring up a tank I have very little on this one. I'm probably going to have to bring up another one to fill it up. And uh, we'll check all that, pressures and everything, and start her up. So, I don't know if you can see, that's what we were running micron-wise. Um, yeah, and I didn't have enough room to put core remover, so the core stayed in. I just left it on there for a while, took a break, went downstairs. So now we're going to charge it up. Went ahead and got a new tank. So I'm just gonna charge it up to where I need to. That should start clearing up soon. It wasn't, I think it was in the low 50s in the box. So and we'll check superheat and all that. But I'm gonna let it run while I take all my stuff down. Freezers than what we did earlier, so our walk-ins are good. And finally get out of this store and be done with it. 
and we'll see what comes up, man. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is kind of a uh, crazy week, and these calls were just back to back to back. So this video is really like three parts. I think the three videos are like uh, my maintenance calls, and then I have the freezer down at the end of the day. I had to do the diagnosis and repair in the next video, which was my last one. And then while I was here, they wanted me to check the leak on this cooler. And that's this video. So I think I'm finally done with these, this little chain of events that happened. And like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe. If you're not yet, uh, like or dislike. I get one every now and then. Not a big deal. And, uh, you know, leave a comment. I talk to you guys on here and on Instagram all the time. I love the community. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.